What's the funniest reason you've been called into school to collect your child? I got a frantic call from my seven-year-old son's teacher during lunch. Her voice was shaking, and she could barely get the words out. Please come to school immediately. The fire department is on their way. Fire department? My heart stopped. What could my kid possibly have done that required emergency responders? When I arrived, the parking lot looked like a disaster zone. Two fire trucks were parked outside with lights flashing. Paramedics were unloading equipment. A police car sat near the entrance. The local news van was setting up cameras. News cameras. Whatever my son did was about to be broadcast to the entire city. A firefighter stopped me at the door. Ma'am, are you the parent? of the child in classroom 12? We need to ask you some questions before you go inside. Questions? From firefighters? I was already mentally calling lawyers and checking our homeowner's insurance. The firefighter exchanged glances with his partner. Well, ma'am, your son created what we're calling an unprecedented situation. We've never responded to anything quite like this before. Unprecedented. My seven-year-old had made firefighting history. I pushed past them and ran down the hallway where teachers were gathered outside his classroom in hushed conversation. The principal was on his phone talking about calling the district superintendent. Superintendent involvement meant expulsion was definitely on the table. I could hear my son's voice through the door, calm as anything, giving what sounded like detailed instructions to multiple adults. The classroom door opened and the fire chief emerged, looking completely baffled. Ma'am, before you see your son, I need to warn you that this situation is highly unusual. We're going to need to document everything for our incident report. I braced myself for the worst. Had he started a fire, flooded the school, created some kind of explosive device from art supplies? The fire chief continued. Your son claims he was conducting a scientific experiment, but the results were far more dramatic than anyone anticipated. Scientific experiment. Great. My kid was going to be featured on the evening news as the seven-year-old who burned down his elementary school in the name of science. The teacher finally appeared, looking completely frazzled. I am so sorry, she said, wringing her hands. We had no idea it would escalate this quickly. Nobody could have predicted this outcome. What exactly did he do? I asked, preparing for the absolute worst case scenario. The teacher took a deep breath. Well, he brought a bag of Mentos and a bottle of Diet Coke for show and tell. He wanted to demonstrate the chemical reaction. Mentos and Diet Coke. I blinked. That's it? The fire chief stepped forward, still looking bewildered. Ma'am, your son didn't just drop one Mentos into one bottle. He brought 12 bottles of Diet Coke and six packs of Mentos. He lined them up in the classroom and set them off simultaneously. The teacher nodded vigorously. The reaction was so violent, it blew the ceiling tiles loose. Diet Coke sprayed everywhere. The smoke detectors went off from all the carbonation mist. The automatic sprinkler system activated. The fire alarm triggered the emergency response protocol. I stared at them in disbelief. You're telling me my son accidentally recreated Mount Vesuvius using convenience store items? Through the classroom door, I could see my soaking wet son standing next to 12 empty soda bottles, enthusiastically drawing chemical equations on the whiteboard for a group of very confused first responders. He was completely in his element, covered in sticky cola residue, but grinning like he'd just discovered electricity. The principal approached me cautiously. Ma'am, while this was highly disruptive, I have to admit your son's presentation was the most engaging science demonstration we've ever witnessed. Half the fire department is asking for the recipe. I apologized profusely, collected my future food scientist, and spent the drive home explaining why indoor volcano experiments require parental supervision and proper ventilation. The next day, three teachers asked if he could repeat the demonstration outdoors for the science fair. 